We're going to take a look at the numbers for the Arkansas ag industry in 2023, talk about some potential tax relief for American families, and a whole lot more on today's episode of the Arkansas AgCast, which starts right now. You're listening to the Arkansas AgCast, where we discuss the latest news, trends, and issues impacting Arkansas farmers and ranchers. Our show is brought to you by the Arkansas Farm Bureau Federation and hosted by Jason Brown and John Nickman. Happy Thursday, everybody. Yay. It is February uh, February 1st, uh, we are back in the studio today after a uh, little road trip last week. Yeah, we're back home. Yeah, we are. I will tell you guys, I have received so many compliments about how that shot of the podcast last week. Oh, the backdrop? Yeah. Yeah. I, have you, has anybody those. mentioned yeah, that to yeah. you? I even thought it was pretty cool myself. <laughs> I said something to Brian. It's like, hey, man, why y'all did that? That looks good. And he's like, well, Matthew did that on purpose. No, I think you said Matthew did it. You know, that was all Matthew's work. And so I went to Matthew. I was like, man, the way you did that, the way you looked, if you haven't seen this, we had a, we were on, on site at the ag conference. Yeah. And the backdrop was a, a hoop tunnel. house, a hot yeah. tunnel, uh, uh, you know, shot. And it looked like we were in it. It did. I will say. Very much so. So I went to Matthew. I was like, man, the way you did that to make it look like we were in that. Uh, hoop house was mm-hmm. like that was so cool and you know what he did he looked at me he goes yeah it was supposed to <laughs> <laughs> like, the no. arrogance on that profound one, I no i don't think it's arrogance it's like yeah you idiot uh yeah. i set it up that way what do you think it was gonna look like <laughs> and my point i said hey i just Try to pay you a compliment. That was pretty cool. Like, you did good work. But Matthew's many things. Arrogant is not one of them. <laughs> That's <laughs> exactly not, right. Yeah. That's exactly joke. right. Yo, he, he was like, yeah, dummy. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, so anyway, I thought that was funny. But I have, seriously, I've heard some good compliments. So when I <laughs> shared it, like sometimes I, I will do, uh, I gave him a shout out for uh, setting that up. Yeah, so uh, nice. Autumn um, made a comment that she was wanting to get some more, like come, I guess commodity specific backdrops like that. Ah, it looks so well. Yeah, it looks yeah. so good. Yeah, she is. So yeah, it did look well. Yeah, well, <laughs> good. <laughs> uh, how's y'all's weeks, man? Not everybody at once. Second week in a row, you're very <laughs> talkative. It's been good. Uh, I've been kind of quiet. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, it seems like work has a roller coaster effect on me. Yeah. Building up, especially to that conference, was just like, got to do this, 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 and this. And now it's yeah. over, and it's like, hmm. Yeah. Okay. I did see some recap on the conference yesterday, I think. They said they had over 500 attendees. Yeah. Sent a big news, um, news release, press release. Yeah. So, uh, so that's good. Sounds like maybe a successful event down there. Yeah, I mean, I, I heard good things from Saturday. I wasn't, I wasn't able to make it Saturday, but they had kind of their uh, agri tourism or farmers market showcase, mm-hmm. vendor showcase. Yeah, uh, so that was good. Okay, well, good deal. I'm glad, glad to hear that. Um, it's been busy mm-hmm. uh, this week. A uh, lot going on. I know Brian and I have been sort of back and forth on several things yep. and trying to keep up with the news, um, the course. Not a lot going on in the ag industry this week. I, I mean, not. I'm not discouraging you to watch or listen because we do have some good stuff to cover. Well, we still have the news. We do have the news, but uh, it's been quiet, I'll say. Uh, fairly quiet. Yeah, I mean, this time of year is meeting season, especially for me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's not a whole lot. I mean, you've, you've got livestock guys that never stop. Gals, sure, yeah. Right? But uh, <clears throat> it seems like whether somebody or the state or the feds in session or if farmers are in the field planning or Mm -hmm. that's when news starts to pick up. Yeah. There was some overnight in general. There was some overnight news from the house, from Congress uh, about uh, some stuff, Um, some tax. We're going to talk about tax stuff. Okay, good. Um, But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, I was also kind of just, didn't really have much fun stuff to talk about today. Not that there's nothing fun going on. 
Yeah. I just, you know, I'm usually inspired by something. It's the weather. It's, uh, you know, obviously we got the big game coming up. In a couple, of weeks. don't want to talk about that today because no. we're talking about we're going to we'll talk it about up that. You don't want me to talk about. It. <laughs> <laughs> so when I get in this spot, I'll often go and look up, uh, like this day in history when yeah. I kind of just reach the my wits end on, yeah. hey, what could we kind of talk about? Um, I'll I'll go and I'll look at this day in history. Mm-hmm. Not a lot there. Um, <laughs> not a lot there either. Uh, this is the anniversary. Today's the anniversary of the wardrobe malfunction. Speaking of the game, oh, oh, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, today. But I thought instead of talk about that, you don't want to bring uh, Justin Timberlake in. And- well, he's he's like all over the place right now. Kind of, yeah. kind of. Uh, I don't know. Uh, controversial a, a bit, I guess. But tomorrow is a holiday. Do you think that's a holiday? <laughs> You've read ahead of my oh, notes. I say. <laughs> yeah. How do you measure holidays? Uh, that one's low on my not a ho- okay, not a holiday. It's not really on my list. At all. Depending on your think. answer, this could fall into <laughs> diehard territory. So that's fair. But tomorrow is Groundhog Day. <laughs> I agree. It's, it's not like a, a holiday. It's like astrology. It's <laughs> <laughs> man. It just said, I don't know about all that. Uh, it's fun. Don't get me wrong. It's fun. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, Poxitani Phil, the original Phil, mm-hmm. he passed. Oh. God rest his soul. How <laughs> a old couple was he? Years ago. I don't know. That's a great trivia question. I don't know. You should look that up. Uh, but we're not going to talk about the holiday. Uh, <laughs> We are going to talk about the film. Okay. Ah. Have you seen it? I have. A couple buffs like you, I can only imagine you have. Mm-hmm. Oh, indeed. <laughs> you know, given the movie, you'd have to watch it a few times. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Who's the star of that of that film, would you say? Who is the star? Yeah. This feels like a trick question. It's not a trick question, I promise you. And- or well, Bill Murray himself is who yeah, I Bill Murray. That's yeah. it. Are we? Yeah. How do how do we feel about Bill Murray? Big fan. Oh, love Bill Murray. Yeah. yeah. How many films? I had to go look this up. Yeah. How many films do you think he's done? Woof. Man, there's there's no there, telling. The, I think Christopher Walken has been in a lot of films. Yeah. You probably have actual research on uh, on this, actual information on this. I, I do not believe it or not. But I would put him up there probably with Walken as far as films he's been in. Hmm. Well, if you're going to go there, is he Michael Caine? I don't know. that. You guys are way more suited for that. I honestly have felt anxious about even bringing this up because you know, <laughs> I'm out of my league. <laughs> what I'm talking about, you guys. My, according to IMDb, which is five minutes worth of research, I think he's been in... Uh, ninety plus films I, I over see his that. career. I could see that. This wow. the, which is bit parts and things. Almost fifty years. Yeah. In the in the in the industry as an actor. I I, I just went through a bunch of movies in my head. Well, there's two that I don't know. There's a lot to stand out. You're right. He's he's got to be in a bunch. It's a it's a lot. And and you know there's SNL stuff of yeah. course and other 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 things. He's got his own holiday Netflix special that came out a couple of years yeah. ago and things. Um, do you have a favorite? Um, Caddyshack. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When I lived in Belgium for grad school, yeah, I couldn't get Which Netflix. Is the second or week in a row this has come up. It comes up a lot because yeah. I'm very fond of that. Yeah. Memory. But <laughs> Caddyshack was one of the only movies I had. <laughs> yeah. I Did you have it, it like every a DVD? Day. <laughs> no. But uh, man, Stripes is uh, underrated. Oh, I think uh, Stripes. Forgot about it. Honestly, kind of. Stripes, Meatballs. Uh, uh, yeah, he is in Meatballs. Yeah. His, that uh, one came up. His Scrooge movie. Yeah, Scrooged. Loved yeah. it. Yeah, which is a movie Scrooge. you brought up at Christmas time. Yeah. 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 Um, Caddyshack. What else? Uh, all the Ghostbusters, man. Ghostbusters. All the Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters films. Uh, I uh, with all the construction going on around our neighborhood, you know where I live right oh, now. Oh yeah, 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 I'm, yeah. I'm constantly quoting Scrooge. Are you? Because I walk around the house and I'm like, "Can somebody please stop the <laughs> hammering?" <laughs> uh, Kingpin. 
King Ben's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, <laughs> I'm just looking. That was fantastic. Uh, all the Wes Anderson stuff, right? And those uh, are some of his best. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, and I don't want to like not give credit to the old old stuff. Yeah, sure. But Moonrise Kingdom was really strong. Mm-hmm. I don't think I, I've ever seen. I, that. I, I like that one. That's the Boy Scout troop. Oh, oh yeah, Ed Norton yeah, Jr. is in that. that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. He's been. He's done a lot of stuff. He got a lot of acclaim for the uh, Lost in Translation. The Lost in Translation. I forgot about Sophia that. Sophia Coppola. Um. But we're going to talk about two specifically. Okay. And both of these have come up today. If you had to pick one, the other's gone forever. Groundhog Day. Or Caddyshack, picking one to keep or get rid of. You're keeping one to. You're picking one to keep. The other okay. one's going away. Which is it? Oh, I gotta keep. I think Caddyshack. y'all answered. Yeah, I think <clears throat> y'all yeah. answered that. I question. love Groundhog yeah. Day. Yeah, but Caddyshack. I mean, come on. Yeah, there's just too much there. Yeah, it is really good. Now I want to go watch it. If I went back and watched Groundhog Day today, I don't know when the last time I watched it, but I think it'd stress me out quite a bit. Give me a lot of anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> that's, besides that, that's a really that's honestly that's a yeah. really fair point. Like that's yeah. a great take. Yeah, my my favorite part of that movie is when he finally catches on, gets it, and that one guy yeah. that keeps coming up to him, going, "Wait." Phil? <laughs> Phil? <laughs> yeah. And then he finally goes, Ned! Ned Ryerson! He goes up and gives him a big hug, and he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that part. That's great. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I could almost quote the entire movie Caddyshack, yeah. if I had to guess. Well, what's great about Bill Murray, in addition to his, you know, roles in movies and as an actor, he's also like this cultural icon mm-hmm. on the golf course. Yeah. Well, aside from Caddyshack, right? Like, yeah. But he's always done these pro-am type things. I think oh, he's yeah. got a clothing line, a yeah, golf clothing line. Um, but he's also famous for just showing up right. at regular people's like parties. Right. It seems like and, he's really and, good with his family. Right. And stuff. He's yeah. a huge people person. Yeah. And just, uh, he's got so much range. Yeah. So much range as an actor and just, mm-hmm. he's just, mm-hmm. he's a great, Great guy. I yeah. don't remember the story verbatim, but there was, you know, somebody had been eating a burger and french fries and he walked by and stole a french fry off their plate <laughs> and looked at him and said, Nobody will ever believe this. And walked away. And <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, no matter who you tell, yeah, nobody will believe yeah. your well, story. My, my buddies and I in high school, you know, when you have to sign a guest book, um, mm-hmm. whenever you go places, mm-hmm. we refuse to sign our own names. We always put Bill Murray. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. So. That's pretty good. Uh, I have a Facebook friend right now. I cannot think of who it could be um, who has run into him in an airport, oh, I believe, yeah. and has posted a selfie uh, yeah. with him. Um, but anyway. That's cool. He was, at a, uh, he was at a hotel um, that I was at at one of the conferences that I was running uh-huh, the uh-huh. pre-Farm Bureau days. Sure, but, sure. Uh, um, it was, uh, I think the name of the movie was The Lowdown. Uh-huh. He was filming that in Georgia uh, with Robert Duvall and mm-hmm. um, Lucas Black. Yeah. And huh. the, the elevators opened and there was Lucas Black. I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> and he's like, well, are you getting on or not? I'm yeah. Like, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, are you talking to me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I lost my moment there. Yeah. Was, yeah. You yeah. Know, didn't expect that. Well, anytime you have that interaction with a celebrity, it's an inner struggle. Do I be cool, right, or do I try and capture this, yeah. or, or, or you know, be part of this? You know, uh, case in point, we were when we were on AFBF convention trip. You know, we went where Sundance was happening. And uh-huh. I won't name him because I don't want to embarrass him. But sure, it was one of our fellow employees. Uh-huh. We're on the sidewalk. I'm standing with him, and there's an actor that walks by, someone that had been in the community, and. He had just been saying, you know, I wonder if we're going to see anybody. And there, here he comes. He goes, oh, oh, hey, hey, I know you. <laughs> uh, the guy stopped and he's like, cool. Yeah. Like, and he kept it in the answer. I know that guy. I know yeah. That guy. It's pretty funny. Yeah, it is so funny. I keep giving him grief over it, but it was a great moment. Yeah, so I I, I'll tell this and then we'll move on. But a buddy of mine and I, he, he had a good friend that used to uh, cater for uh Bill Street Music Festival yep. in May. And we would help. Uh, we helped one year, mm-hmm. mainly because of the access that got us backstage. We got to be on stage with several 
uh, performers as they were performing and, and so on and so forth. Uh, and we were walking uh, backstage one day. Once I remember it was Sunday morning of the music festival. And uh, this guy rode by us, uh, walked by us. Uh, and he's like, hey, guys, what's up? And we were like, oh, hey, man, what's up? And we got by him, and I was – this game we play with my best friend. I'm saying, yeah. who was that? Like, was that guy in this fraternity at college? Did we work with them? Like, I know him, but I don't know who it was. Yeah. And uh, he was like, dude, that was Jake Gyllenhaal. And I was like, uh, what? what? And he goes, <laughs> Yeah. That's why you know him. It was Jake Gyllenhaal. And I was like, oh, my God. Well, I'm kind of glad I didn't like you thought he was, a brother. he was, you know. And uh, next thing we know, here they come back. And this time he's riding on the uh, handlebars of this BMX bike. And this guy with, like, long hair is pedaling, or uh, pedaling, you know, and he's riding on the bike or whatever. Yeah. I was like, there he goes again. I wonder what Who's he, he hanging for? out with. Yeah. You know? <laughs> And uh, he's like, I don't know who that was. So anyway, later on during the day, we look up and um, we're watching. And it was the Avet brothers. He was there. <laughs> the Avet brothers were yeah. playing. Huh. And I guess they were just buddies or whatever. And they were goofing off backstage waiting on the show or whatever. <laughs> it was Jake Gyllenhaal. Hanging you didn't on get the, a picture or autograph? No, 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 no. I, I, I seriously didn't know who he was. I thought he was just somebody I had run into before. Um, but anyway, so that's my... Like seriously, my like one of my few celebrity sightings. <laughs> uh, pretty funny, but he was like, "Dummy, he who is that guy?" <laughs> <It's>, he's <laughs> not. We you don't know him from college. <laughs> he's Jake Gyllenhaal. You know, anyway, I'm sure he didn't go to Arkansas funny. State. <laughs> yeah, pretty funny. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah. So act right. The point is, act right. If you see somebody, yeah. right? If you learn anything today from this podcast? Take that home with you. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, there's that. We'll have to come back and talk about that if y'all have ever had any other kind of famous person interaction sometime. I met John Daly once. Yeah? Yeah. I think, well, I don't know that you ever told me that story. You have that painting of John Daly in your yeah, office. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a copy, poster. Mm, oh, a print. He did yeah. sign it, though. Yeah. That's pretty oh, cool. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've been How about a, that? Uh, yeah. Sounds I've been like a lot this is about to be a deep dive sometime. Yeah, so. we're, we're not. We're going to stop. I'm going to cut us off right there. Yeah, okay. Um, but uh, there you go. All right. Happy Groundhog Day tomorrow. Uh, it's not a holiday. What is it? Six weeks of winter if he sees his shadow or something? I don't know if it's he sees it or he doesn't, but I know it's going to either predict six more weeks of yep. winter or, or early spring. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe if he sees his shadow. I wonder if he's a cancer or a. <laughs> uh, Stop it. <laughs> Whatever. He's a Leo. <laughs> Leo. Uh, oh, my goodness. All right. Well, uh, before we get into the news, just a quick reminder, A-State Agri-Business Conference is happening next week. We've talked about this past few weeks. Last week, we went over uh, some of the agenda points. Um, but if you're able to be in Jonesboro for that next week, it's sure to be a good, a good conference, a good event. Yep. Uh, and also the uh, EQIP uh, application process through USDA, that Act Now program, uh, which is kind of a change in how they're funding uh, projects. It, the application window for that is still open, will be open uh, until February 22nd. Uh, and that's important because there are, there are uh, 19 million bucks up for grabs in that program uh, it, it, within the high tunnel uh on farm energy and soil health uh, sort of segments of that. So if you're not familiar, go to your local USDA office, ask them about it, um, and see if you can't get involved in, in, in that and maybe uh, get some funds to help yeah. do the work that you're doing. Uh, yeah. I guess that's it. And we can, for the, for, the, for the first part of the show, and we can kind of dig into the news here. Okay. Uh, George Jared with Talk Business and Politics. Uh, somebody that we talk about quite often on this show. We report a lot of his news and we his do. stories here. Uh, anyway, George has published an article focused on uh, the agriculture industry uh, in their in that publication's State of the State series. They issue this series twice a year. Um, they have just put out the first the first updates uh, uh, for for the year there. Uh, and the ag industry got its own got its own issue in the series. Uh, so let's take a look back at last year's ag industry numbers for Arkansas. Uh, George opens up with a frankly 
honestly staggering number. Uh, Arkansas's ag sector grew to nearly $21 billion uh, last year in 2023. That growth comes despite factors and challenges like um, fluctuating commodity prices, input cost hikes, and other things. Um, in terms of cash receipts, the largest agriculture subsectors uh, included uh, broiler production, chicken production, uh, with a value of $3.9 billion, uh, soybeans with a value of $1.6 billion, and uh, rice with a value of $1.3 billion. All those are with a B. Uh, other top ag commodities uh, in the state include turkeys, turkeys, cotton, corn, and cattle. Um, George Jared noted that with commodity prices up and some input costs down, acres expanded for several crops uh, such as soybeans, uh, corn and peanuts soybean yields are also projected to set a state record from the 2023 growing season this is something we've talked about on the show a few times yep uh we're expecting to see a 53 bushel per acre mark um when those numbers come in which would be a one bushel per acre higher than the previous record which is set in 21. Uh, corn also had a strong showing besting last year's yield by more than seven bushels per acre to hit that 180 bushel per acre mark uh as we know arkansas is the top rice producing state in the country and we planted an estimated 1.3 million acres uh in 2023 which was about a 200,000 uh, acre increase uh over 2022. Uh, peanuts had a good year growing more than 166 million pounds of the commodity and potentially surpassing the all-time yield record of uh around well 5288 pounds per acre which was set in 2017. Uh sneak in a little trivia here with you. Did you know that we grow almost exclusively runner peanuts? Uh that's the type of peanut that's used to make peanut butter. Uh, not, not not exactly. Yeah. But I, I knew we were growing them to make peanut butter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh I'll skip the cattle report because I think you're gonna plan to cover some of that here in a bit. Uh um, um no, you can go ahead and go. Yeah. Um, so the cattle numbers are look good. Mostly the report focused on, uh, you know, pricing uh, for yeah. both uh, b- for cattle there. Um, and, and again, moving on uh, as we wrap up here, moving on to poultry uh, and eggs, we produce on average just under 7.5 million pounds of broiler meat in Arkansas. We produced 27.5 million turkeys this year which was a 6% increase over last year. Uh, And lastly, about 300 million eggs are produced in Arkansas every month. I had no idea we were at that level. Mm -hmm. Uh, 300 million eggs per month. uh, That average was up about 1% uh, last year over the previous, according to USDA. Yeah. So there's some numbers. The state of the state uh, for the ag industry, uh, you can find that at Talk Business and Politics website. Um, yeah, it sounds like production all around has increased, uh, and usually that means you know economically a, a trickle down effect to uh, indirect value for other industries or other yeah. businesses within those communities. Yeah, I would agree. So hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully that that we continue on that trend. Yeah. Well, let's uh, continue with some more good news, but specifically, like you said, I was going to report on beef numbers. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, like I said, some good news for beef producers. Prices prices seem to be up here at the beginning of the year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dr. David Anderson of Texas A and M Agri Life Extension posted an article or published an article in Southern Ag Today this week detailing higher prices for cattle and beef prices in the beginning of 2024. Steers weighing five to six hundred pounds have increased from two hundred forty-six dollars a hundred weight in early January to two hundred fifty-four dollars a hundred weight today. Uh, in the Southern Plains, specifically, the same weight calves hit three hundred dollars a hundred weight, which was two hundred eighty-four dollars to start the year. According to Dr. Anderson, both market area prices are up forty percent higher than they were this time last year. He also notes that prices for these weight steers traditionally increase from the first year, from the first of the year through March. However, seven to eight hundred pounds uh, pound steer prices have increased at a more moderate rate, with prices mm-hmm. up three to four percent during January. Uh, these higher prices have bucked the normal seasonal pattern of the seven to eight hundred pound steer prices that traditionally fall through March. Hmm. Fed cattle prices have also experienced a small increase in price. 
Finishing last week around $174 a hundredweight, Dr. Anderson noticed that fed cattle prices usually experience price increases in the spring, but it's a little early for a rally. Uh, although there are 2% more cattle on feed than last year, Dr. Anderson believes that good consumer demand uh, would allow us to see an uh, even better price rally uh, than previous years. Uh, as far as beef goes, choice beef cutout stands out from the rest, which surpassed 300 dollars 100 weight last week and is up over 20 dollars 100 weight since the beginning of the year hmm. lastly dr anderson mentions with fewer calves cattle and beef production the stage is set for even higher prices for later in the year inventory yep supply and demand and that's that how about that article yeah it sure <laughs> is well you know i said i kind of skipped that the, the cattle piece and you're talking about from a u.s perspective yeah yeah um, well this is more of like a say texas through the southeast. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I missed yeah, that. No problem. Um, you know, I think what what George Jared had reported um, was that by the by the last week of November in 2023, prices for medium and large number one steer calves, which is that five to six hundred yeah. pound, mm-hmm. uh, were above two hundred and seventy dollars per hundred weight, and that bested 2022 by eighty bucks, yeah. and bested. Uh, the 2017 to 21 by 100 bucks. Yeah, I don't know what um, current herd numbers are right now. Yeah, but I'm assuming they're not as large as they were two or three years ago. Yeah. So <laughs> if if that's the case, then we're looking again at a supply and demand situation where prices are better, just because the su- the supply of or the herd in general, if you want to call it that, is isn't as big as it used to be. Yeah, he didn't get into herd size uh, at all. I mean, we know that. About fifty four percent, give or take, of all farms in Arkansas are cattle farms. Um, but and we just, I feel like we talked about that recently too. Um, but yeah, anyhow, and maybe um, we get uh, Mr. Cartwright in here to clarify some of this stuff idea. for us. Not a bad idea. Because it seems like in the last, well, since I've been on this second January, I've done in my mm-hmm. career on the podcast, we're talking about cattle numbers. Yeah, and I think that that's uh, something that populates heavily in the beginning of the year yeah that, that information yeah and I, I do know he he gave some input on that uh story that we did two weeks ago um as far as inventory goes yeah. and if i i'm i may have said something to him then I, then actually about yeah. uh coming on and, and talking to us yeah. about that well, so maybe we, we got go. a new idea all right well let's take a short break and hear a bit about what farm bureau membership can do in your community Your Arkansas Farm Bureau membership supports the work we do on behalf of Arkansas farmers, ranchers, and communities around the state. A $40 annual Farm Bureau membership makes a difference in your neighborhood. From youth leadership programs and academic scholarships to hunger relief and disaster support, you can make a difference and be a champion for your community. Join at ARFB.com. All right, I'll get us back on track with news from the U.S. House today. A group of U.S. House members have officially launched the Bipartisan Congressional Agricultural Trade Caucus uh, to advocate and promote policies uh, vital to U.S. agriculture. The group was started by Representative Adrian Smith of Nebraska, Jim Costa of California, uh, Dusty Johnson of South Dakota, and Jimmy Panetta of California. Uh, The work of the caucus will include boosting agricultural exports, facilitating food and agriculture trade, and addressing trade barriers. Additionally, the group will work to solidify support for trade policies that benefit producers, rural communities, and all those along the food and agricultural supply chains. The caucus also says it will support education and engagement opportunities for members of Congress to promote policies which boost international competitiveness increase market access, uh, address non-tariff barriers to trade, improve supply chains, and reestablish U.S. global leadership on trade. Hmm. American Farm Bureau Federation President Zippy Duvall commented today on the launch of, of, a new agri- of the new Agricultural Trade Caucus by saying, AFBF appreciates House lawmakers for coming together in a bipartisan manner to form an Agriculture Trade Caucus. We have a real opportunity to showcase American agriculture on the global stage. Expanded trade agreements will help ensure America's farmers and ranchers remain economically sustainable by providing access to new markets as they feed families around the world. So 
good news. Uh, more bipartisan uh, action, which uh, I think you will also have some news on that. But yeah. great, always great to see that when that happens in D.C. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I gave a story last week about trade and the issues we're dealing with with shipments and stuff. So maybe some good news comes out of that regarding you know uh, logistics yeah. of commodities. Yeah, exactly. Exports. Hopefully so. Well, I'm going to keep the good news rolling. All uh, right. I'm also going to keep the news coming out of uh, the U.S. House of Representatives, too. Okay. Uh, this is regarding uh, tax relief for American families and businesses, uh, including farmers. So just this week, in a show of bipartisan efforts, the U.S. House of Representatives passed the Tax Relief for American Families and Workers Act. Mm. The bill is now on its way to the U.S. Senate and is expected to be voted on soon. <clears throat> According to a press release by the House Committee on Ways and Means, the bill will provide American workers, families, farmers, and small businesses much-needed tax relief to help grow and prosper at home while strengthening our competition versus China. Mm -hmm. Specifically, the bill brings back key provisions of the 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, or TCJA, which includes research and development expensing, interest deductibility, and 100% expensing for investments in facilities, equipment, and machines. Nice. This means that American companies will be able to immediately deduct research and development costs, deduct interest before expenses, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, and also allows employers to fully deduct the cost of capital investments in equipment, machinery, and facilities, like I said before. Mm -hmm. The bill also includes $33 billion to expand the child tax credit for the next three years, including the current tax season we're in right now yeah this would allow more low-income families to access the credit and would allow many families to receive a larger credit the amounts also would be uh, adjusted for inflation in coming years mm. currently the senate has not put the bill on its schedule mm -hmm. to be voted on yet but uh we or i will continue to monitor the situation as it progresses uh i think this will be you know as a father myself i wouldn't mind having a, a tax cut you yeah know, or a deduction of some sort uh, but, you know, uh, it, what I think really stands out, the potential of this bill is being able to, uh, for farmers to uh, deduct equipment, machinery, and facilities. Yeah. Their assets. You know, yeah. That, I think that'll be huge. Also, the uh, um, I think if I didn't mention it, the uh, interest rates on loans. Business oh, loans. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I, from what I saw, I mean, I know Senate hasn't skip, put this on the schedule yet. But what I was reading about this uh, this morning, because I think this just passed last night. It did. Um, what I was reading this morning is, and I haven't looked at the vote count, but it was a pretty overwhelming uh, majority here. Yeah, it was here. 300 and something to 70. Yeah, so I, I mean, I know the House and Senate don't mirror each other uh, really ever, but I, I would assume that if it if it passed with that type of majority, then it shouldn't have any issue yeah. in the Senate. Yeah, and also but, what I, I read was that, you know, 70 the voted against it their pushback was that the tax credit for the child tax credit wasn't large enough didn't go far enough okay. you know they weren't really i mean there were some against more tax credits for businesses but that mm -hmm. was the child tax credit was not large enough interesting yeah. well uh yeah okay well good deal that's that's good news yeah we do it we had all good news this week it's I feel usually like. not the case you know <laughs> no, it's not at all i was feeling good uh, this morning like i told you earlier so yeah well, yeah. somebody's gonna bring us down. <laughs> yeah, something's gonna humble us. He's like, I, he's I, like, I have a feeling. Look at these guys just feeling good on cloud nine. Yeah. <laughs> but why shouldn't it be that? good weather? Yeah, I mean, it's good weather uh, outside. Why yeah, wouldn't it be yeah. good news and yeah. everything? So uh, we'll see. Uh, yeah, good weather until tomorrow. I think the weekend the rain comes back. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I yeah. may go into lunch after this kind of depressed. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how hard he is on us. <laughs> All right, All we right. got on us. Well, or we got for each other. Uh, it is time once again for. <laughs> it gets me every time. <laughs> hey, I, I forgot to tell you something. Can I? Can I interrupt? Absolutely. I already have. Yeah. The other night, my phone rings. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in bed. We were talking yeah. about bedtimes earlier. My dad. I'm like, oh boy, I better grab this. Eight eight thirty. He knows what time my bedtime is. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, I'll, I'll go ahead and grab this. I answer the phone. He's like, hey, what are you doing? Are you in bed yet? I was like, yeah, I'm laying in bed, about to go to sleep. What's up? Something going on? He's like, I just wanted to tell you, we're so happy Brian was back on the show today. 
<laughs> I was like, what? You called me right now to say that? I love yeah. it that he was yeah. just about woke this you up for that. That's, two, week, two weeks ago. That's, this is, that's, uh, well, <laughs> he's like, I said, are you serious thank right you, now? Thank you, Dad. I yeah. appreciate that very much. He's like, no, I just wanted to, I just wanted to tell you. <laughs> uh, it's just better. We just like it when, <laughs> when Brian's better. back. It was that's, good. That's yeah. good. I mean, they love Matthew. Sure. You know? yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Who but doesn't? It's so. like, uh, just we just want to say that. Would you pass well, that on for me? I, Is that not funny? I appreciate that very much. <laughs> I, I get where it's I mean, coming it's from because if I if I wasn't to call and just say that immediately, I'd lose that thought and I'd never get across. Yeah. So maybe that's where he was. Yeah. Maybe so. He just <laughs> he just needed to communicate that at oh, that time. It was well, pretty that's funny. Awesome. So there you go. Well, you got a fan. That's great. Yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, well, let's continue the thing. <laughs> Mainly he it's, likes you because you make uh, us look. He's a little flustered uh, now. I, 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 I'm hoping we can do that again. Okay. I also themed my trivia Groundhog Day. Oh, uh, interesting. How about that? How about that? So, You've been holding I on mean, to that whole show. Right. Yeah, I I was holding it back. Uh, it's It means a lot to me because when I was in school uh, at Harding, uh-huh. I, you know, we didn't have uh, fraternities. We had social clubs. Yeah. Sure. I was in one called Titans. Okay. And we did not, you know, most fraternities and groups, they do, uh, you know, they'll do a holiday banquet or Uh or whatever. We specifically skipped that and went direct to Groundhog Day. So (laughs) we always had a Groundhog Day banquet. Set you apart. Yeah, differentiate yourself. Indeed it did. (laughs) And it was quite fun always. So it means a lot to me. Oh, that's uh, cool. But it, well, I, I apologize for my previous statement that it's a uh, well, questionable know, holiday. You went ahead and spent some time. <laughs> spent some it's time. Just, just, well, uh, yeah. the questionable Insulting. part will come here with some of this trivia, <laughs> okay. so we may we may <laughs> unearth a couple of things. But uh, I, I, I apologize if I offended you. I do not take back my comment. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I don't think there are any Pennsylvania listeners right now. Yeah. If there are, yeah. they may take offense at they it, might. or they some, might. you know, that's Groundhog funny. fans. But that's funny. Let's let's see. All right, uh, here we go. In what year was Groundhog Day first celebrated? Is it before or after the top hat? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like when the top hat was fashionable. That was random. You, yeah, did, yeah. Do you know when the top well, hat was, was invented using magic or something? Or like, no, I don't no, know. No, that's just first thing that came to mind. Every every time you see somebody holding that groundhog, they all have top hats. I've well, they done. do. <laughs> yeah, indeed. But I have no clue where this number came from, but it popped in my head, so I'm going with it. 1962. See, okay. I was thinking the 70s, but uh, I guess I'll go a dollar bob and say uh, 1960. <laughs> no, I'm gonna say 19. 19- 38. Oh. I appreciate that extra effort to really dial in on yeah, it. Yeah, but yeah, I tell you, you're there. both way off. So. <laughs> okay. 1887. Wow. Yeah, I was close. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. fascinating. It's, I'm assuming it's always been sort of the same thing. This groundhog, shadow or not, predicting the weather. The yes. same basic idea. Well, sort of. Okay. Sort of. Okay. We'll, we'll get we'll there, get too. There. Okay. All right. Oh, well, I got a lot of questions. Go ahead. You can keep asking the questions. That, well, that was somebody just standing around one day. <laughs> they're like, hey, there's a groundhog. He saw a shadow. I guess that means we got some more, more winter coming. There had to be correlation. Well, we may have to have multiple groundhog trivias because I'm not going to have enough yeah. uh, time to ask all those questions. Or was it two but, people? Did you see that groundhog? <laughs> no. So, <laughs> so you guys kind of got to it. Is yeah. it if he sees his shadow, is it six weeks more? Or is it six weeks less? Uh, yeah, I can never remember. I think the idea is he sees his shadow, it scares him, he goes into the hole. Yeah, there's more winter And coming. so it's like there's more winter coming. Yeah, I think that's it. Is that there is, how it If works? he sees his shadow, it's six more weeks of okay. winter. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's at least what they say. Okay. According to the National... Yes, I was hoping you were going to do this. Climatic Data Center. Uh-huh. <laughs> what has been... <laughs> I'm glad that he's, I love that it's making him laugh already. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So they look at the climate. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. What has been the accuracy rate of the groundhog's predictions? Mm. 35%. I'm going to say 52. I'm going to give it to. Okay. Okay. Mr. Brown, it was 39. Uh, oh, I thought you were going to give it to him. Yeah, he was pointing to me, I thought. I actually would have thought 
at least you know I'm no I'm toss. no mathematician, Some but yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought this one, percent. yeah, wow. I thought this one was interesting. Uh, in uh, in Texas, what animal do they have? They they also have their own animal that predicts the the weather, the winter weather. Um, armadillo, prairie dog. Yeah, it's oh, the armadillo. armadillo. Oh wow, yeah. nice yeah. armadillo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's me. So anyway. I thought all those were, were those are great. Uh, I've got more I'll uh, share with you. Okay, uh, you know I, I can show you some of this. Uh, believe it or not, the earliest tradition. Um, you'd never get this one, so I just share. Apparently, when this whole thing very first started, they actually ate the groundhog. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Uh, Times are tough. A bit well, more. Maybe harsh, there was. So. Maybe it wasn't somebody just sticking around. Like, somebody was hungry. That's, <laughs> yeah. That's why I was laughing when he very first brought that up. So. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> That, All that's right. what I have well, for you. Uh, so, that's pretty fun. I'm that's, glad we were on yeah. the same page there. Yeah. How about that? Well, I enjoyed that. I think, I think my positivity will continue throughout the day. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> he approves of yeah. our work. Apparently. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> so. I liked it. Good. All right. Well, that wraps up the news this week. Thanks for following along with the Arkansas AgCast. We're grateful for you taking the time to watch and listen. Yeah. Remember, you can catch new episodes of the show every Thursday afternoon. Find f- video episodes on Facebook and YouTube. Listen to the audio version wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to subscribe and leave us a review when you have a few extra minutes. Uh, The Arkansas iCast is brought to you by the Arkansas Farm Bureau. I'm Jason Brown. And I'm John McMinn. And we'll see you next week.